Social media today has turned the in-person troubling conversations of the past and some dark actions of the past into global demonstrable crimes. The social media tech giants have created the perfect invisibility cloak for spreading misinformation, manipulation, and actual crimes by using the First Amendment and their status as corporations. As such, my take on Pavel Durov's arrest in Paris is the same that I've come to appreciate here in China. Pavel was seen, in my opinion incorrectly, as the person providing one of the freest platforms in the world until that freedom of a speech caught up with him in a double standard that is just... Chevsky's. Ironically, Pavel would not have been arrested in China. How come? Let's talk about that today. Welcome to my channel. A quick reminder that this content is produced also in Spanish, so make sure to go click over there to subscribe or make sure that you are still subscribed to this channel because you know how YouTube does. Thank you. So let me start strong off the blocks over here. Absolute freedom of a speech kills people. It provides cover for hate and manipulation via misinformation that actually affects the lives of people. Internet censorship is a necessity. Western social media is increasingly being used around the world as a weapon for color revolutions and safe haven for crimes that we all abhor. There's the attempted coup in Venezuela, the turmoil in Bangladesh, turmoil in Pakistan, the misinformation regarding the wars in Ukraine, in Russia, the genocide in Gaza, the, the psyops about Russia, China, the trafficking of minors and humans, the plotting of terrorism and indoctrination of people. These days, social media and tech companies like cryptocurrency, often used to finance a lot of this horror, are being used to support these um, crimes in countries that do not censor their internet, countries that have no cyber sovereignty. It used to be that political parties in the West had media branches like Fox, MSNBC, and CNN that they used to inform and manipulate public opinion, but there were boundaries and entry barriers, such as having a journalism degree in, in some cases. But fast forward to today, and these tech giants have stepped up to the plate and are doing the same misinformation, the same manipulation and covering for crimes, but without accountability. They argue that they are merely hosting content produced by others. They hide behind that First Amendment to allow content that common sense tells us should not be given any reach at all. But because they're a private entity, they also get the other side of this advantage. They get to censor and downthrottle content that they dislike or content that contradicts their own agenda. And that's not a crime against freedom of speech because they are a private entity. They get to make their own rules. I would take this even further. AI. AI is already capable of generating more and more realistic fake content. But let me take it even further. What if some company out there started creating X-rated content with AI? But wait. What if it were depicting... Where will the law stand there? Where would you stand? Is that ethical or unethical? Because the argument could be made that no one was actually hurt in the making of that AI product, but do you want that to be legal? Do you want that to be okay? Do you find it preferable to hurting real children, or do you find it equally condemnable? Do you recognize that as unethical promotion of an undesirable behavior? If so, could that get you to support blocking other undesirable behaviors? Because here's the thing. If underage, you know what, or terrorist plots and disinformation, misinformation were being shared on Telegram, it is Durov's duty to put a stop to it. Like Musk, he may claim that they tried, but they failed. Particularly Elon Musk. We've all scrolled down through posts of important people on X to find adult content, mostly created by robots, but nothing we can do. We try very hard. As I said at the beginning, they have created the perfect invisibility cloak for crime, misinformation, and manipulation. The world seems to be moving too fast for these technologies. 
The fabric of society is staring at the seam and these tech giants are raking in billions while this happens. Here's the thing. When Facebook, uh, now Meta, and other Western social media apps did nothing to stop the coordination of terrorist attacks by Uyghur extremists and separatists in their platforms here in China, in Xinjiang, China simply denied them access to its users, denied access to its market. I believe China should have made Zuckerberg accountable for the death and destruction that his products allowed to take place in Xinjiang. But China didn't. They just created the great firewall of China. They created cyber sovereignty. And, well, in light of Powell's arrest in France, at the behest, of course, of the USA, or Israel, as it was the case with Meng Wanzhou's arrest in Canada, the CFO from um, Huawei, it is ironic that today, all these tech giants in social media should be worry-free whenever visiting China, because the great firewall makes it impossible for them to break laws here. So no matter what is posted on Meta or X, Elon and Zuckerberg will not be arrested in China because they aren't breaking laws here. They're doing questionable and unethical business in places where those governments are in a symbiotic relationship with them. Officials are beholden to them for donations and to use their platforms as tools of manipulation. That doesn't happen here. Societal harmony is a greater good than the freedom to hate and commit crimes using a global megaphone like a social media. The truth is that freedom of speech isn't absolute. No freedom in the world is absolute. We're social animals, and that need to coexist. And as such, we waive freedoms for participation in society. China recognizes this. They recognize the danger of absolute freedom of speech. It is spelled out succinctly in Chapter 2, Article 41 of their Constitution. But what did China do to face these modern challenges, these this difficulties of modern times? Well, they mandated that users must provide identification to have access to social media platforms. People can watch content all they want without having to do this, but in order to communicate, in order to post or to reply or to comment, you must link your account to your ID or your passport if you're a foreigner. That's why it is so easy for foreigners to link their credit cards to payment apps like Alipay, but not to WeChat Pay because WeChat is a social media app. It is much more than just a payment app, so the registration process is more tedious. Now, because of that, whatever you do online, is always traceable to you, and you will be made accountable for your online behavior. The government make those corporations responsible for the monitoring of content. This is why members of government sit in the boards of directors to keep a clear and direct line of communication as to what is acceptable and what is not, without misunderstandings. Now, people may ask, okay, Fernando, but who determines what is okay and what is not okay? Who are you to tell us? The answer is simple. The old practice of letting the wise and the sage in society determine that. They are in charge of maintaining the harmonious society that we enjoy here in China, and you do not in the West. That protection of society is taking place in countries like China and Russia, but not in your countries out there in the West, where these tech giants are being elevated to pedestals as producers and defenders of rights, purveyors and guardians of freedom and truth, increasingly and indisputably presented to us as the holders of, of wisdom and sapiency, which by definition they're not. Success in business does not make them the knights of societal principles. If anything, the opposite is true. These people are on principle bottom line growth bullies. They're profit chasers, debt servicing slaves that must find ways to operate under a variety of states' legislations and kowtow to one side of power or the other, or both in most cases, in order to stay in business and satisfy shareholders' expectations. Ask yourselves, how is truth being served when the FBI tells Meta to downplay the Hunter Biden laptop story and they acquiesce? 
How is truth being served when X shows a non-existent genocide trending many times over than the one that we see daily on our timelines? How is truth being served when Israel is caught pushing for the TikTok ban after Anti-Defamation League said, oh, we got a TikTok problem? None of these people, none of these people are serving the truth. They choose a side that benefits them and play their role, and for that they get rewarded. I've got to interrupt you here because the city council meeting may not be used to lodge charges or complaints against any employee of the city. So to heck with absolute freedom of his speech. What you ought to do is uphold values that promote a wholesome and harmonious society, ban anything else, and make online anonymity impossible. And I know that I'm asking this from a country that is fighting to allow undocumented people to vote. So there's that. All right, friends, that's all the time we have for today. Thank you so much for watching this video. And as always, if you liked it, give it a thumbs up. And if you like the content on my channel, consider subscribing. Until you do that, don't forget to hit the bell button to be notified whenever there is a new video out. And if you want to support the work that I do, make sure to hit the link in the description down below to buy me a cup of coffee. And until I see you again, take it easy and bye for now.